Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com, along with Andrew Bone of BamaInsider.com. Hope everyone is staying safe. Um, today, we're talking recruiting. Alabama currently has one committed prospect during this time. Uh, brought in Andrew Bone, our recruiting analyst at BamaInsider.com. How's it going, Bone? It's good. You know, just uh, trying to stay indoors as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know uh, recently it was just your, uh, your anniversary, one year, man. One year ago, we were in Birmingham celebrating, <laughs> right? That's right. That's right. We were supposed to be at, uh, we were supposed to be down on 30A this week um, celebrating, uh, you know, the one year. And, um, and also I had a buddy that was getting married this weekend. So we were going to spend a whole week down at the beach. And uh, obviously those plans fell through. And, um, but we still had a great time. We, we uh, cooked dinner at the house and, um, we had fun. It was a uh, it was a good evening, and um, you know, hopefully we can take a trip uh, somewhere. Um, maybe not in the near future, but <laughs> maybe sometime here uh, in the next year we can we can go somewhere before our two year anniversary. Yeah, one uh, one piece of advice: my uh, ten year wedding anniversary will be uh, this year. Actually, <laughs> happy wife, happy life. All right, so uh, there you go. So um, three prospects we're talking about. Um, from the offensive side, actually, it's Tommy Brockemeyer, James Brockemeyer. And if you've been following BamaInsider.com, um, you know that Andrew caught up with their father. And, um, you know, th there's a lot of ties to Texas with these two young men, being that their father played for the Longhorns. Their mom, even um, she was an athlete, played for the um, Longhorns as well. So, Bone, let, let's start with those guys. And then we're also going to talk about Hudson Wolf here at the end of the video. But um, can, can Alabama realistically, um, you know, get these two linemen I mean it's it seems like when, when I look when I look everywhere it seems like it's almost like a Texas lock what give uh, give us some positive news in, in terms of what Alabama can do to seal the deal with both these two linemen yeah well uh, you know I think the you know the biggest thing with the, with those two guys is uh, you know they're trying to make the best decision for themselves not necessarily um, you know gonna I don't think they're trying to follow in their father's footsteps now if they end up going to Texas I think it's uh you know it has more to do with uh you know kind of what they see in terms of their future and uh, you know how they can be developed and and you know potentially making their own legacy now obviously a lot of uh, family tradition uh at Texas um you know the grandfather uh, their grandfather played uh there as an offensive lineman Father played there as an offensive lineman. Was an All American mm -hmm. uh, at Texas in the uh, in the mid '90s and uh, was the first round NFL draft pick. Um, I mean, he's also in the I think you know, in the Texas uh, Hall of Honor or whatever whatever it is they call it uh, down there. I mean, definitely one of the top players that have uh, that has played at Texas. So uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure. You know, and, and especially being in the state of Texas. Um, you know, right there in Fort Worth, um, you know, definitely a lot of pressure from, uh, you know, people in the community, you know, friends, family, you know, a lot of people are, are hoping, you know, those two guys end up going to Texas. Now the people that aren't putting pressure on those two guys to go to Texas are their parents. You know, they're really hoping they make their own decision that, uh, you know, they really evaluate everything and, and uh, you know, do what's best for them. And, and that's why I think Alabama is in, in such a, a unique, good strong position with with those guys right now because they have visited Alabama a few times um you know their their dad you know understands you know the recruiting game he understands uh you know playing at a big time university so you know I think he even sees Alabama as a program that uh that can really help develop uh his children and uh and take their game you know to the next level so uh you know like I said both those guys have visited Alabama multiple times they were supposed to come back uh, to Tuscaloosa uh, in April for an official visit, uh, but that's not going to happen. Obviously, um, you know we don't know when things are going to uh, turn around when kids can start visiting schools again. But, but um, you know, speaking to them uh, last week, you know they both said that they are going to uh, to visit Alabama as quickly as possible. I, mean, I, I don't know if they're going to take all the all of their official visits. Now, it may happen, but um, but I think that, uh, you know, they'll at least get to Alabama, LSU, Texas. You know, those are certainly the schools that are, you know, that are very high on their list. Um, you know, I actually think that, you know, if they were to go out of state, I think it would be to Alabama. Um, and I think Alabama probably, you know, may have the lead for them right now. I, I think mm -hmm. they're, Alabama's in, in a very good position uh, because of the relationship they have built with the, uh, with the coaching staff. Um, 
Kyle Flood's done an excellent job recruiting those guys. Nick Saban's also uh, you know, been on the phone with those guys via FaceTime uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks. Um, and I think one of the biggest things that happened, uh, happened on Saturday, um, you know, Coach uh, David uh, Ballou, the, uh, the new strength coach, ended up having a, uh, a video conference with, uh, with Tommy and James uh, over the phone. Uh, it was their first time to speak with him. Um, and, you know, they were really looking forward to, uh, to meeting the new strength staff during that official visit. But, you know, obviously that didn't happen. And uh, they had a chance to uh, spend some time with him uh, over, uh, I think it was Zoom. Um, you know, they were able to do that over Zoom. So uh, they really enjoyed that, had a great conversation. They were very impressed. Uh, you know, I think the entire family has been impressed with what they've at least heard and seen uh, from these new strength coaches. And now they just, you know, want to kind of see them and meet with them in person, which, um, you know, hopefully will happen during the summer at least. Um, but uh, like I said, I think Alabama's in a pretty good position with those two guys right now. And it's a big year for offensive line. And the offensive line is a very critical position of need for Alabama in this 2021 recruiting class after signing only three uh, offensive linemen in this, uh, this past 2020 class. So trying to get, you know, maybe six offensive linemen is uh, going to be very important to Alabama this year. There's some great players over in, over in the state of Georgia that they're recruiting this year. Um, you know, Michael Morris just put out his top five uh, today, uh, naming Alabama as one of his top mm -hmm. five schools. Uh, you got Amarius Mims over there, Terrence Ferguson, two, you know, two, a few other, um, you know, big time offensive linemen. But, you know, with the Brocker Myers, I think Alabama's got a great chance to land both of those guys. And, um, you know, both of them want to play uh, at the next level together. They, they're planning on going. You know, it's not necessarily a package deal, but they do want to play together. So, um, you know, I th you know and most of the schools that have offered them um, have offered both of them. So they're going to have that opportunity wherever they decide to go. We're talking with uh, Andrew Bone of BamaInsider.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and thanks for subscribing. Um, we'll continue to pump out recruiting coverage best we can on BamaInsider.com. Thanks for staying with us. Um, you know, this is this sort of situation obviously has never happened before. So we're we're learning as we go. And um, Alabama currently only has one committed prospect. And I, I want to talk to Bone about that in a minute. But um, Bone, I want to get your take on Hudson Wolf, um, six foot six, two hundred and thirty-five pound tight end out of Tennessee. Um, what's the latest on him? I know you recently uh, posted an interview with with Hudson and. It looks like uh, he could be a, a key target when Alabama looks to the tight end position. Yeah, well, Hudson named a top five this weekend on Saturday, um, Alabama, Tennessee, um, Ole Miss, Ohio State, and, and Georgia. Um, you know, looking at that list, I, probably, I think it's probably a three-team race, in my opinion, with Alabama, uh, Ohio State, and, uh, and Tennessee. Now, I grew up a Tennessee fan. Um, Ohio State's really been coming on strong lately with him. He's built a very good relationship with their coaching staff. Uh, their recruiting is off to a tremendous start. Uh, it seems like every every day they're get, they're picking up someone big, and uh, he's certainly one of their top uh, tier tier uh, targets in their recruiting class. And they they hope to land him. But uh, so does Alabama. I mean, Alabama really uh, you know considers him a an elite player. Um, he's taken I think seven unofficial visits to Alabama. Uh, so far, and that's a lot of trips to one program. I mean, he was in Tuscaloosa, I think, three times during the regular season. He was uh, at the first junior day in February. Um, and as of right now, uh, he's got an official visit scheduled to Alabama on June the 20th. Um, we'll see if that ends up sticking. But uh, but as of right now, he plans on visiting on the 20th now. Um, something that's significant about that visit is he's scheduled to visit Ohio State the week before. He's scheduled to visit Ohio State for an official on June the 12th, and then he's going to be visiting Alabama after that. So at least Alabama gets him after uh, that Ohio State visit. And you never know. You never know if, you know, if he may decide to, uh, to make a commitment shortly after that, after visiting two of his top uh, schools. I'm sure he's probably going to try to schedule some other trips uh, during the summer if possible, um, and we'll just kind of go from there. But, uh, you know, like I said, he's certainly a big-time target for the Crimson Tide. He's visited, you know, so many times. It's a little bit closer to home uh, than Columbus, Columbus. but um, uh, I do think that Alabama is, a, uh, you know, in the top – at least in the top three for him. I don't want to say I'm predicting him to Alabama. I, I don't think that's really the case just yet. I think, you know, he's, uh, you know, 
he's got three or four schools that are very high on his list. He wants to visit those schools and then, um, then make that decision afterwards. Well, when we look at the class of 2021, I mean, there's not much to look at right now. I mean, there's only one committed prospect and that's uh, Deontay Lawson, who's out of Mobile, Alabama. I mean, it, it's never time to panic when you're under Nick Saban, right? But I mean, in terms of what's happening right now within the country, I mean, it's, it's going to be, there's a lot of room to make up, obviously, for Alabama. I mean, um, we haven't heard from Saban. Recently did an article um, and he talked about kind of the challenges that everybody's going through, not only Alabama. Um, you've never seen anything like this before, neither have I. I mean, it, it's going to be tough for Alabama to make up a lot of ground. You, you still feel confident about this class when we, when we look forward and just considering all the things that are happening to Alabama along with all the other programs facing the fact that they cannot uh, get prospects on campus and, and, and such as we move through this, this uh, dizzying and confusing time. Yeah, well, you know, one thing I'm never too worried about is Alabama football recruiting, and I don't think most fans are ever ever too concerned about it. You know, there, but there are some areas that um, you start to question and wonder, you know, kind of when things are going to happen because, like I said, everything's pretty much on hold right now. Yeah. I mean, there's absolutely nothing going on. Uh, you know, we're seeing kids commit to other schools, kids that, you know, not necessarily were – leaning towards Alabama or anything like that, but we are seeing other programs picking up, pick up commitments. Ohio state has several commitments right now. You know, Clemson has several commitments. There's a lot of schools out there that have double digit commitments right now. Well, Alabama's not far from that. They only have one commitment with Deontay Lawson. And, but a lot of their big targets are trying to wait until this whole pandemic ends this, uh, this, the COVID-19 uh, whole situation so that they can get back on the road and take their official visits. They can, you know, there was so many guys that were scheduled to come in uh, to Tuscaloosa during the spring, during their spring break, but they weren't only visiting Alabama. They were visiting, you know, several other schools that, that are in their top group and they were hoping to make that decision this spring, this summer. And, um, you know, now all that's being pushed back. So I think the biggest thing with Alabama right now is maybe trying to get some in-state guys on the commitment list. Um, you know, a lot of these out-of-state guys are probably going to wait. They're going to wait until they take their visits. So they can see more programs. Uh, and some of them haven't even been to Alabama just yet. So they want to get to Tuscaloosa and uh, figure some things out. But you know, with Alabama and the in-state kids, you know, all these in-state kids have visited Tuscaloosa so many times. They've visited other programs. A lot of these guys have been recruited for the last couple of years. Uh, you know, Jaquincy McKinstry, uh, you know, Tim Keenan, uh, Jeremiah Williams, uh, Dylan Brooks. Uh, you know, those are some guys that have, have been recruited for a long time. Um, and if Alabama could get one or two of those guys on board, um, you know, this spring during this whole dead period, I think that would really be a big boost for them, uh, you know, heading into the summer because they need, you know, they, they need to get a couple more guys on board. You know, Obviously, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not too concerned with Alabama getting commitments. <laughs> They're going to get commitments, but it just so, for some momentum, uh, you know, they really need to get, get some momentum because it's really kind of dead right now. I mean, the, you know, the last thing that happened with Alabama is Scott Cochran left. And yeah. then, um, you know, they just hadn't really, you know, they were able to have a, a, a quick junior day, but it really wasn't that big. And we really never really, we, we didn't push it as a big junior day uh, on our website. I mean, there was a lot of, you know, several juniors who were on campus, but we knew that the coming weeks were going to be huge for Alabama in terms of getting kids on campus. There was kids scheduled official visits in April. Now all that's just on hold and it's putting everybody a little bit behind, but some of these programs that have, like I said, uh, eight, nine, 10 commitments, maybe even more than that, they're sitting pretty good right now because they know they have those commitments on board. Alabama still just sitting there with that one commitment. Now it's a great commitment in Deontay Lawson, but, uh, but you got to get some more on board and uh, you know, they're certainly hoping, you know, Alabama fans want to get commitments on board. Trust me, Alabama coaches are hoping to get commitments on board too. Uh, they're not just sitting there like, you know, thinking, all right, we can wait a while. No, they're ready to get some more guys on board. Trust me. Yeah. Well, uh, We'll continue to, to bring Andrew on to talk recruiting and continue to deliver the content and especially the recruiting content that I know you guys crave. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. Um, Alabama with one commitment right now. So there's a lot of room to make up. And then the, you're seeing the graphic right now. Ohio State, Clemson. Um, Ohio State has 15 commits. Clemson has 10. Florida has 13. North Carolina, 11. Notre Dame, 7. Miami with 10. So um, there's going to be a lot of recruiting news. So stay tuned to BamaInsider.com. For Andrew Bone, my name is Kyle Henderson. Thanks for watching on BamaInsider.com. We'll catch you back on the website. Remember, free 30 days 
Promo code is simply Roll Tide at checkout. Um, hope to see you soon at bandinsider.com.